So let's pick up right around here where we see the javadoc comment for um, returning an iterator for our linked list. Um, again, we're going to keep modeling the Java standard library version of the linked list. So this method here needs to return a list iterator. And the method should be called list iterator. And all the implementation needs to do is say return new list iterator. Oh, wait, sorry, just kidding. List iterator um, is the interface. We want to return the concrete um, implementation for a linked list. So we're going to return a new linked list iterator, iterator. And we have to like write that class still. Right, like it started down here, but there's a lot more we have to do. So we're gonna do that in a moment. But before we write that class, at least let's write the method. So we have another inner class here. You'll notice this one is not static. Um, and again, that document explains why, but I'll touch on it as we work through this. Um, so we're going to work through the linked list iterator. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of how to, I want to preface this. Um, the code we're going to write today is not very much. We're not going to write that many lines of code. Um, however, it's conceptually really complicated. And so after we code this today, I wouldn't necessarily expect that like you've totally wrapped your head around the way that a linked list iterator works. And that's okay. My advice is that um, let this settle, um, go back and read through the code later. And I think that's gonna help, um, especially if you go back and read through this code as you look at the diagrams that we're going to be referencing as we go through this as well. Just to put this in perspective, a few years ago, um, I was doing this very lesson in software engineering, and we did live coding for the whole period on linked list iterators. And I was so confused that it was all wrong, like everything we typed. And the next day we deleted it all and we started again. Okay, so I share that just to let you know, like, this is tricky stuff. Um, and so we're going to try to take it slow. And it's okay if it doesn't sink in at first, because we're going to revisit it. We're going to support it with diagrams. We're going to work through it. All right, so given that, let's start doing some of this linked list iterator stuff. Our class linked list iterator is going to implement the list iterator interface. Um, from the Java standard library, okay? Um, it's not happy with us yet because we haven't implemented all the methods that we need, but we're gonna go through and do that right now. First, we're gonna capture the instance variables that an iterator needs. Um, there are three that we have to keep track of, and we're gonna make all of these private. We need to reference the position of the iterator, okay? Um, and the challenge with this is that last chapter, conceptually, we thought of an iterator as between two elements in our linked list. And that was really helpful conceptually because then when we added something, we knew where it would go. And when we said next, we knew which one we'd go over and that all worked really well. Now that we're implementing a linked list iterator ourselves, we can't do that anymore. There's no way to have a reference between two nodes, right? We can only refer to one node or another. Um, so things conceptually get a little bit more challenging because we actually have to pick a standard way of doing this. Our position here is going to refer to the node that was most recently iterated over, okay? So you know, like when we call next, we iterate over a node and we return, or we iterate over an element and return a reference to that element. Our position instance variable here is going to re refer to the node that contains the element that was just returned.
by next or previous. Okay, so we're pointing at that specific node. In order to implement some of the features supported by the iterator, we need a, an, another instance variable as well, which refers to a node, and we're going to call this previous. The previous instance variable refers to the second to last node that we iterated over with either next or previous. And we need that when we start removing nodes and stuff. Okay, so that's why we need to keep track of, of previous. Finally, we need one. And that's going to be a Boolean. And we're going to call it is after next. With an iterator, we need to keep track of was next or previous recently called. Think back to chapter 15 and some of the limitations with iterators in terms of removing um, an element uh, and that we can't do that like twice in a row. We can only do that right after we call next or previous. This instance variable helps us track that state. Um, so we know if the user is allowed to um, remove an element or not. So that's why we keep track of that. All right, so these are the three instance variables we're gonna use. Um, and we're going to start by focusing on the constructor. So let's get these initialized the way they should when we create a brand new linked list iterator. So our constructor, public visibility, linked list iterator, and we're going to initialize all of these. I'm going to initialize these explicitly, even though every, all the three lines of code I'm about to write are what the default values are anyway. I just want to be super explicit given the complexity of this. So position we're going to assign to null, previous we're going to assign to null, and is after next we're going to assign to false. So all of these are the default values anyway. I just want to be explicit with what we're setting them to here in this code. All right, so for each little chunk of code we're going to write, we're going to look at a picture too. Um, so here's an example of a linked list. First refers to the first node, has the element Diana. Next refers to the next second node, has the element Harry. Next refers to the third node, has the element Romeo, so on and so forth. When we make a new list iterator, previous is null, position is null, is after next is false. That's where we're starting from here. All right. We're going to then invoke next. Okay. When we have a brand new list iterator and we call next, it should return the first element, so it should return Diana. But in terms of its instance variables, position should refer to the node whose element we just returned. Okay, so position needs to refer to the first node in our linked list. Previous is going to stay null because we've only called next once. There is no second to last node to refer to. And since we just called next, is after next will be set to true. Okay. So we're going to work on writing, implementing um, the next method. So let's take a look at that. So here's the Java doc for the next method. Moves the iterator past the next element. It returns the traversed element. And so this is going to be public. We're going to return, um, the return type will be object because we're not doing this as a generic. We're going to keep it this simple for now. The method name is called next, just like it is in the Java standard library. Um, we want this to work for like all cases. Um, so we've got to check a few different things. So let's first focus on we're going to set is after next to true because that captures that, hey, we just called next, so it's going to be okay to call remove. Um, 
And then let's cover the case with um, updating position, or let's handle the case of we're at the, the iterators at the very beginning of the list. So if position equals null, position equals null, we're going to return a reference to the element of that first node. So we're gonna set position equal to first. This is where inner classes, nested classes can be a little challenging. This variable position refers to the instance variable of the linked list iterator class. This variable first refers to the instance variable of the outer linked list class. Right, so we because this is a nested class, we can refer to private instance variables both within the nested class as well as within the outer class. I, I believe so. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, I think the the nested class shadows the outer class. Not uh, this. This will refer to the outer class, not the inner class. But just don't do that. Don't do that either. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, nah, this doesn't chain like that, right? This, I think this always refers, I think this always refers to the outer class. Yeah. Um, all right, so that sets position. Um, and then we're going to say return position dot data. Okay. We're not, we're not done, but this code captures what we saw on this slide here, right? So we've updated position. We're returning this data. Um, we updated is after next to true. So this covers the one specific case where our linked list iterator was brand new and we're iterating over the very first node in our linked list. What if we call it again? What if we now call next again? Um, it's gonna look a little bit different. Position will now refer to the second node in the list and we're going to return Harry. Is after next will still be true and previous now refers to the second most recent one. So previous is going to refer to the first node. Okay. So what I always have to think through as I'm trying to code this is I need to update previous, but like where am I gonna get the value from? So I end up like flipping back and forth between the two images to help me figure that out. So position is initially referring to this first node. So before I change position to refer to the second node, I better set previous to refer to that first node. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in code. So we're gonna make some changes here. Before we do all this stuff by changing position, we're gonna set previous to position. This is absolutely essential for that the calling next the second time, but it's fine to do calling next the first time, right? Because position equals null. So we're just setting previous to null as well, which is what we want it to be. It doesn't hurt. So this line of code takes care of previous. Um, and now position won't equal null. So we need an else and say, okay, well, if position isn't null, set position equal to position dot next. That's how we get the next one. So first update previous. Previous should have the value of position before next is called. Make sure is after next is set to true. If position is null, we're at the beginning of the list. Otherwise advance position by using that next and always return the data. So this covers a brand new linked list iterator. This also covers when we call next a subsequent time. Um, we have to handle one more thing, but yeah, I go ahead. Right, what if position.next is null, right? What are we going to do 
then. Um, we better check for that. So we're going to write, there's another method of a, an iterator called has next. So we're going to actually use that internally within here. So we're going to say if has next equals false, then none of this can happen, right? We can't call next if there is no next. So instead we throw a new, no such element exception like we were doing on Friday. So this covers, once we implement has next, this covers the case of there is no next node. Otherwise we have it figured out pretty well. Before we write the has next method, what questions do you have about the next method? Yeah. Correct. So just just because there's enough going on here, we're just doing a singly linked list for now. Um, but conceptually, doing previous would be really similar to next. Exactly, yeah. All right, well, let's look at has next. So here's the Java doc for the has next method. Tests if there is an element after the iterator position, returns true if there is an element after the iterator position. So public Boolean has next. This is a standard list iterator method. Um, well, we could say return position dot next is not equal to null. So if position dot next is not equal to null, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. But this won't always work. What edge case do we have to cover? To avoid a null pointer exception. What's that? That would be true. It could be more, yes. If there's nothing in the linked list at all, this would give us a null pointer exception. And what other case will this also give us a null pointer exception? even if there is something in the list, but that is definitely part of it. What's that? Yeah, position equals null. So even if there are elements in the list, but it's a brand new linked list iterator, position will also be null. So we just have to check for that. So we have to say if position equals null, position equals null. If position equals null, it may be okay. We just need to return something else. We can say return first is not equal to null. Because if position is null, it's just a new iterator. So we need to look at the linked list itself and see if it has any nodes in it. If first is not equal to null, we're good to go. Um, there are elements in the list. Otherwise, if it's empty, like Chris was saying, we're going to get that null pointer exception, so we'll return false instead. There we go. That covers as next. Let's look at another picture. All right. So let's think about what it takes to add an element somewhere within our linked list. Okay. Um, and there's several different cases for this. We're going to go through, we're going to code this incrementally, focusing on one like case at a time. So here's the case where we have a new linked list iterator. Um, and so previous and position are both null. Here is the new node that we're going to make that um, with this data, Juliet, that we want to insert, we want to add to our linked list. And because we have a brand new iterator, um, and therefore it's at the front of the list, 
this new node should become the first node in our list. So let's look at all the changes that have to happen to do this. You can tell I drew this by hand. <laughs> so my arrows aren't great. Um, but let's, that's fine. Let's look at what has to happen. Position needs to refer to the new node that we're going to make that encapsulates the data Juliet. This new node's next needs to refer to what was the first node in the list. The first node in the list now needs to refer to the new node we created and not this one anymore. And then everything else is fine. And we have to think through the order in which we update these things so we don't lose the references we need. Um, for example, new node.next needs to refer to this node and the place we get it is with first. So we better set new node.next before we change first as an example, okay? The, as always, the order is, is very essential here. All right, so let's try to update all of these different references to add this node. So if we scroll down to our next method, here's the add method, adds an element before the iterator position and moves the iterator past the inserted element. So we've got public void add, one parameter of type object, and that's the element. Right now we're just focused on the case where we have a brand new iterator that's referring to the very beginning of the list. So we can say if position equals null, that means we have a brand new iterator and we want to do all this stuff. Is this familiar? Have we written this code before? Yeah. Yeah, we already wrote the code for this on Friday, so let's not duplicate it. If we scroll up to the code we wrote on Friday, here's the add first method. We did the three steps. We did them in a very specific order so we wouldn't lose track of the references. So rather than duplicating this code, let's just call the add first method. So if we go back here to add, in this case, we can simply call add first and pass along the element. Now we still have to update our iterator. So we still have to say position equals first. Again, due to the complexity of the code we're writing, and this is just a good idea in general, we don't want to du duplicate code um, at all. So if we've written it in another method, we're going to leverage that method rather than duplicating the code. So this updates the position to first, which we need. Previous can stay null, that's fine. But we do need to update is after next to be false. Because we just called add, that means we didn't just call next and we're not able to do stuff like um, remove a node at this point. And we will see why shortly, just a few minutes. All right, let's look at the next case. Let's say that our iterator is referring to this node here, the second node in the list and we're going to insert another new node, this one with the data, the element Juliet. What all do we have to update to make this work? Okay. Um, so we got to think about like, how do we update the links, the next links within our nodes, and how do we update our iterator? So we're going to see several changes. Here's what it looks like after. Um, and here, you can tell I didn't draw this one. These are nice curves, and they're labeled. Um, four steps we have to do. Because the list iterator refers to the node that we like just iterated over, um, that means when we add a node, it's going to be put here between these two. It's going to go after the one we're referring to. And so this new node will be inserted between the node referring to Harry and Romeo. So four steps, order matters. In the new nodes next, needs to refer to this node here. 
How do we get to this node here? Well, the iterator's position refers to Harry's node, and that dot next refers to the third node. So by saying position dot next, we can get the value, the reference to this node, and that's what we're going to assign right here. Second step, the node referring to Harry used to reference the node Romeo node. Now it's going to reference the new node. So we can say position dot next equals new node. That's step two. Now that we've linked everything up, we can focus on our iterator. We can say position equals new node. And now our iterator has been updated and is after next we set to false. So we have four steps to do in this more generic case of adding a node in the middle of our linked list. So let's add an else. This will cover the else case. We need to actually make a new node. So we'll say new node. And we need to initialize all of its instance variables. New node.data equals element. That's passed as a parameter. New node.next. This is where in the diagram it was position.next. Let's actually, I mean, I want to number these like it was here. So that's step one. I think it's helpful to connect it back to the diagram. So step one is updating the next of new node. Step two is updating the next of previous node. So we'll say position.next equals new node. That's step two. Step three is updating the iterator. Position equals new node. And step four is saying is after next is false, which is down here. We'll put it here. We need to do that in both cases. I want more of this to fit on the screen at once. I'm just going to reformat a little bit. This is a great example of the complexity I'm talking about. We wrote five lines of code to be able to add an element in the middle of a linked list. And conceptually, there's a lot going on there. If we switch any of these lines of code around, like it's not gonna work. Um, the order is critically important. We're referencing like references through references. Um, this is why I'm gonna encourage you like, let this settle, come back later tonight, tomorrow, look at this again, um, look at the pictures as we go. Questions about add. Yes. Do you mean, can we call add twice? We can call add twice. So let's look at the picture. That's a great question. Yeah, so position, so like if we were to call add again at this point, the new new node we're adding would be between Juliet and Romeo. And our iterator has all the right references to make that work. Um, we have no idea what previous is. We've kind of just left that gone, but that's okay because we only care about previous when we're removing. So what's up? Mm -hmm. 
let's say we're going to remove. Let's say we have a new um, list iterator and we've called next on it. So is after next is set to true. The list iterator is referring to the first node here, the Diana node, and we're going to call remove, which means get rid of Diana. So we're going to write the code for the special case of we're removing the first node in our linked list. That's going to be the first thing we do. So we're going to scroll down here to remove. Public void remove. If position equals first, meaning if the iterator is set to, uh, we've called next just once, so we've iterated over just that first node, um, we can fix up our thing. I don't want to write a lot of code. What do I call instead from Friday? Yeah, we'll just call remove first. We're also going to set position back to null. Because that position right now is referring to the node we're removing, and our iterator would be totally invalid if position refers to a node no longer in our linked list. So we're going to set it back to null, meaning it's at the very beginning of the list. That's an important step that's easy to forget. All right, we got just a couple more things to do. Let's say instead our iterator is referring to the second node, meaning previous refers to the first node, we're going to delete the node Harry and we're going to clean everything else up. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Else. When we do this, when we're cleaning this up, three steps. The first node now ref needs to refer to the third position needs to point back to the first and is after next has to be set to false three steps let's do all three previous dot next equals position dot next that's step one position equals previous at step two, is after next equals false. That's step three. Crazy. This is why we need previous, and this is why we can't call remove twice. Because once we set position to previous, we would need like a previous previous to be able to update previous, right? And we don't have that, and that could go on forever. So instead, um, we only call remove once. We need one final check, which is to make sure we're not calling remove twice. So if not is after next, we throw a new new exception, illegal, illegal state exception. The iterator is in an illegal state. You can't call remove on it again. That's what that ex 